Hi everyone, welcome back to Burst TV. My name is Nancy Tran, registered dental hygienist and Burst Senior Ambassador. February is Children's Dental Health Month and we have a lot of exciting things happening here at Burst. Today's segment, I wanted to talk to you specifically about pediatric frenems, what it is, what to expect, what to look for, and how to treat them. you're probably wondering, what is a frenum? A frenum is a soft tissue attachment that has muscle fibers that attaches your lips, your cheeks, and your tongue to the soft tissues in the mouth. It also provides more stability. So if you look and you lift your lip, you have soft tissue and little frenums that help connect um, your lips and your cheeks to the underlying gum tissue. So frenum, um, frenums are classified in four different classifications, one through four, and depending on the level of attachment, that helps us as professionals determine whether or not the patient will be at risk for developmental delays, such as the ability to latch or drink from a bottle, um, proper spoon feeding, and also speech development. So things like this helps us uh, determine patient-specific treatment, um, and they're addressed as needed. So what do we do if there's a frenum that's present, but it doesn't affect any of the developmental characteristics that were previously discussed, such as nursing, latching, baby bottle feeding, um, the ability to eat with a spoon, speech delays, or tooth eruption? Um, is there anything else that we want to look for? So if your child has a frenum and they've reached all their developmental milestones with flying colors, um, then great. But I do encourage you to make sure that you are doing your routine dental checkups and even checking at home on on a weekly, if not daily basis, so that you can see if there's any changes in their enamel health. So my daughter, um, she's 17 months now, and we brushed and flossed and um, wiped her gums and did everything that a normal parent would do, especially a dental professional parent. Um, but around the holidays, I started to notice that she started getting white spots at the um, areas where her front teeth were starting to erupt through the gums. So um, they weren't fully erupted yet, but as they were coming in, there were white spots on the teeth. So it could be several things. It could have been just like um, white spots as part of decalcification um, with tooth eruption. And sometimes we find that in little kids. So I wasn't too concerned, but I still um, monitored it on a day-to-day -day basis. And I started taking photos. So I took the first photo at one week and then the second week, and then the third week. And you'll be able to see the comparison photos with that rampant um, soft spot turn into rampant decay fast. So her enamel started to break down pretty quickly. Um, and part of the reason is because although she has a frenum and she met all of her developmental milestones and she didn't have any issues with them, because that frenum and that lip fold was unable to clear the milk and the food particles underneath um, throughout the day, it started to break down her enamel. So this is something I wanna share with everyone, parents, dental professionals, and um, anyone with children out there so you know what to look for. Because even though we do everything that we can, sometimes having simple things with your dental anatomy can put you at higher risk and you're just more prone. Um, the good thing is we were able to treat it. So her decay, um, her front four teeth, her baby, her front four baby teeth were decayed. We were able to treat it. Um, we had the phrenectomy done. They done it with a laser, so they released that tie, and within three weeks, she was fully healed. Um, it reattached to from a class two to three to a class one, which is higher up in the free movable area. So her lip was able to be um, more mobile. We were able to brush her teeth a lot easier, wipe her gums. A lot of food didn't have to sit underneath that frenum pool. Um, and as far as treatment for the decay, because she's so little, we decided to hold off on any major dental treatment. We did um, a treatment of SDF, which is silver diamine fluoride. It, uh, it pretty much is a treatment of a solution that goes on the teeth of silver diamine fluoride, and it's known to arrest the decay. The only downfall is it actually turns your teeth black um, until you're able to do treatment on those teeth. So we did two treatments so far, one month apart, and then they reevaluate and do it every six months after um, until she's old enough to address those teeth um, in the dental chair. So. These are uh, just a little quick video and segment just to talk about the frenums, what to look for, how to treat it, how it can be treated, um, and then of course the consequences or 
um, risk factors of having baby nursing decay, what I went through with my daughter. Um, so easy checks is, I call it a quick lip flip. You just want to flip that lip and see how high those frenum uh, attachments are and then whether or not they pull. So um, if you see that there is a frenum that exists, there's a classification chart here, one, two, three, and four. And if you have any concerns, you can always ask your dental professional or your pediatrician to help you look and determine whether or not there's any uh, risk factors or treatment that should be done. I hope this video helps. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. Stay tuned for more Burst TV segments and y'all have a wonderful Children's Dental Health Month. Bye.